Percocets and alcohol? Whoa. Did somebody throw back the hands of time? Jesus. This is going to be a fun episode, my friends. Um, yeah. not These aren't illegal narcotics. They were obtained via a prescription. Um, I had a horrible, weird jaw pain. An earache. I took Grace into baseball today. I don't normally get to do that, so I was kind of excited to be able to do that. I wasn't prepared for it. I forgot to bring him a water and a hat. But I thought it was going to get canceled because the freaking clouds that rolled in rapidly around here and the temperature dropped like 20 degrees today. It was just like, I mean, not over the course of the day, but this was the first day that it was just like, wow, this is kind of cool. Um, and tonight, when I brought him, about an hour in, I was wishing I brought a sweatshirt. I had one probably in my car, but it was like 50 feet away. We're going to walk there. <laughs> this made me think. Uh, I was trying to let Chewie stay in the, the room tonight. I don't know if you've seen him wandering around. Come here, Chewie. Come on. There he comes. Um, just to see how he wants. You want to come up here? Come on. Oh. This is Chewy. I know some of you guys have met him before. He's a real son of a bitch. Do you hear me? You eat human feces. I really don't appreciate that. But you're so cute. He is so cute. And I'm trying to be uh, a good doggy dad. <laughs> I know that sounds corny, but look at this. I didn't even fix the set tonight. See now? Here's a window right here. Yeah. That's the outside world. There's a huge ass, I told you last night, uh, golden orb weaver out there. Or orb weaver. It's yellow on its back. Yellow, white, and black. Beautiful. Beautiful. Palomino. Wonderful fur. Well, <clears throat> before I started rolling tonight, I didn't really have much I wanted to talk about. A lot of the stuff I want to talk about, I'm gonna, I've am gonna. i probably already talked about. But maybe I'll get a different angle on it or a different version of it. I, I mean... You repeat stories. Like, you go to... You see your friend enough times and you hear the story over and over again. Go listen and watch to the Human Goat episode. That's the perfect example of that. Um, we've got a what's on the menu tonight. I'll tell you what it is tonight. Uh, just because you may not even care. Uh, no one watched the last one. I guess. I don't know. Somebody might have missed it. I think it's a Pico de Gallo. Huh? And this was a, a flavor inspired by Samuel... Oliveros, one of their employees. That's pretty cool. I think they're a pretty good company. No, I don't. I know nothing about them. I've heard, I think I've read stuff, though, that they're not bad to work for. Um, yeah, so we're going to be trying those out. We might even just do it on the episode tonight. I have a feeling we've got a long one ahead of us. <clears throat> uh, I was going through my channel. No, you're not getting any chips, you son of a bitch. Um, and I saw Tales from the Chill Room, and I forgot that, I mean, I've got a lot of stories from that period in my life, and, and I think Mike subscribing yesterday, because he was a part of that journey, um, kind of reminded me of it, so I saw it today, I was like, oh shit, I should come up with some more of the, uh, Tales from the Chill Room, uh, stories. For those who don't know, Tales for the Ch from the Chill Room are based, oh god, my dog's gonna piss on something. He's a horrible animal. Um, they're based on, technically it's a three month period, pretty much, but it lasted for like more like two years. But the three months were the, the rockin', the just crazy all night parties and getting up late for work and just having no responsibility. We were just, I mean, we, we lived the whole sex, drugs, and rock and roll. That was, those are a whole book in and of its... I'm just going to shut up. I'm probably going to cut it that out because I'll feel bad. <laughs> Anywho, uh, yeah, these three months were just... I mean, when I think of the cast of characters, if you guys don't know them, check... Friend me on Facebook. It's just G-E-Y-C-E-N, and it's Oliveira. O-L-I-V-E-I-R-A. And if you ever want to see faces of the people that I'm talking about, you can go over there and take a look at them. You don't have to. I can set up a, maybe I'll just do a page. Is it a page or is it a group? I'll do a page. So, I don't know. We'll see. Oh, 
We'll see if you can actually see this tonight or not. You never know. Sometimes you get lucky, sometimes you don't. Okay, so I've got a little bit of... The perspective obviously looks all messed up because of the... Wait a minute. No, it's fine. Yeah. Uh, Charlie is... This is frame 20, if you're interested. Um, and actually, I have to fix the... Here, the island in his kitchen is um it's out of perspective i don't take the time to set up a drafting board and a triangle and a t-square most of the time you're only going to be seeing two we can i mean very little you know the camera's not tilting much you're definitely seeing two point and it, you could incorporate third point too um but I just, I'm, you know, it's funny. I tried to draw something for myself the other day because I haven't been doing that a lot. And I want to draw my character for my new Dungeons and Dragons campaign. Um, he, uh, he's just unique. And uh, I don't know. After doing this repetition, like, I'm starting to learn how to define a character. Like, I've always feel like character design isn't a problem for me. But to keep it consistent. And this has forced me into doing that. Now, I could draw Spider-Man a million times and come up with different ways to do the webbing, but it's close enough. But when you're talking about a face and features, light does different things, you know, uh, the skin wrinkles as it ages and stuff. And so I've been trying to, like, consistently do that from picture to picture, which is really interesting. How did I get from the chill room to here? Just a popular guy tonight. Uh, Poe hasn't had her medicine. See, my other dog is on um, anti-anxiety meds, but they're pretty good. Oh, geez, now I'm getting calls. Hang on a second. Hi, Road to Forty Pizza. How can I help you? <laughs> medication. Hi, how you doing, buddy? I love you. That's the goal. That's oh. the goal. All right. Because we were just talking about Grayson's kept clearing his throat, and I said, "Let me make a gross noise and just clear it out at lunch." And he's like, "Listen to this one." He's like, "Is this like my apple?" And I was like, "The what?" He's like, "My apple." He's like, "Does he mean the Adam's apple?" And he said, "No." And he started laughing. He's like, "Isn't it the ship that?" Did you say that's some pilgrim shit? Pilgrim ship, yeah, the May apple. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, we need to definitely do some history this year. We didn't do too much last year. What's that? We didn't do a whole hell of a lot of history last year, but he'll he'll make up for it this year. We're not gonna fucking do that. We're not gonna fucking do history. We're not gonna fucking. Okay. All right. I'm gonna. Yeah, I'm gonna let you go because now I gotta edit this video. <laughs> All right. Good night. <laughs> That's my life in a nutshell, and I wouldn't change it for the world. Yeah, I wish my son... Well, he doesn't say out of the house, but he says fucking <laughs> in the house. They have little potty mouths, and I'm betting a lot of people out there, maybe not necessarily you guys, but there's a, probably a high percentage of like, you know what, we all grow up, we all swear. Um course i would prefer he didn't and only use it on those special occasions <laughs> he did pretty good at baseball today this is his first year with baseball he did t-ball last year he's very distracted though like i try to talk to him like in between like when they're moving around or getting a water break or something and try to tell him never let your ball balls <laughs> leave your eyes <laughs> never let the ball leave your eyesight like always be conscious of where it is you know and learn to develop memorization 
muscle memorization with bats and eye hand coordination and stuff but he's still little he's seven so if he's into it i i really didn't think he would be he's very he's a gentle soul a very gentle soul and he can be aggressive sometimes but i think it's because he's frustrated he gets frustrated but he's a smart boy very very smart he's doing third grade stuff in second grade right now and I'm sorely tempted to try some fourth grade stuff with him. His math is, he's very good, and he's retaining a lot of it, too. I wish I had done more over the summer with him because, uh, I mean, technically, I could probably have him in fourth grade right now. I don't want to push him, though. I don't want him to ever feel pushed. I want him to move at his own level and still be challenged a little bit. Um, I hated that. I hated that about, get out of here, you damn dog about school like I just don't I don't know maybe I have some kind of, of ADHD or something like that maybe I do need something because I am easily distracted obviously you can see on this nightly vlog entitled the road to 40 featuring Jason Oliveira in case you didn't know I forgot to introduce myself at the front now that like and I don't mean to to say we're up to some next level shit but like now that i'm finding a new audience like you guys are like from all over the world excuse me i think i'm dying <laughs> um and like i forget that this episode could be the first one for someone you know what i mean you never know i don't know not me see i'm all about god damn it oh my god um continuity i couldn't start at like episode 163 or whatever like that would drive me crazy like um even things that don't matter i can't i have to start at the beginning that's such an anal retentive thing i have to anal holy shit man i haven't felt this good in a while <laughs> like this whoo dang that used to be my drug of choice let's talk about road to, um let's talk about the road to 40 to say this <laughs> now uh tales from the children i think i've said this before like i've done a lot of different things uh most of it i'm very proud of you know what i mean nothing i tried was ever hard or addictive or anything like that or could kill you um or at least not in the short term. Uh, but back in the day, my favorite thing was mixing pills with alcohol. And it don't get me wrong, it feels good. But that's something that is a little bit addictive, could become addictive. So <clears throat> tonight I needed to take one, though. But I didn't think it was going to hit me like this. I feel pretty damn good. Laid back with my mind on my... I ain't got no money. Um, I wanted to do a pre-Throwback Thursday thing, but I can't remember what it was about. Anywho, I've veered so many times off the road. Uh, that, God damn it, tonight. <laughs> you can, Just bear with me, please. Right, Doctor? Yeah, I don't think Chewy being in here helps either. I keep hearing noise, and I'm like, what is that? What is this? What is this? What is that? But these three months, like, I, alcohol and pills, like, is a good time. I don't recommend that you do it or ever try it just because if you take too many pills, you could kill yourself. But, I mean, I never went that far. There was only one night in my entire time, and it oddly didn't happen at my house, which I was such a homebody, it happened at Gary and Brad's. And I think I told you the story before, but um, I took two or three. They were either Percocets or Percodans or, or God damn it, Chewy. Uh, it was a painkiller. Um, and, and then we smoked two joints with Jen and Monty and Keith in his car. Then... Artie Nyman and I went shot for shot, Jack Daniels, and I think it was like 16 shots or something. And I remember when all of a sudden I realized that the whole time I'd had fun and I wasn't doing it to 
you know, a lot of people say, well, you drink and do drugs for a reason. Some people just do it recreationally. They just really enjoy it. And um, so as I was doing this, I wasn't thinking I was pushing myself too far. Like, I just wasn't thinking. I was just hanging out with all my best friends, you know, 20, 30 people. And, uh, and then just realizing all of a sudden, I was like, oh, my God, I've, I better stop right now. Like, things could be really bad. Like, thankfully, I'd only taken... It, oh, it was, um... Shit. The one goddamn Eminem used to rap about. Whatever that pill. Vicodin. It was, like, two Vicodin and a Klodopin or something like that. And drinks. Two or three drinks. And then the shots. And then realizing, dear God, I've made a horrible mistake. Thankfully, people stuck with me. Uh, for the night, they knew that I was nervous, but I didn't want to like go to the hospital or something like that. Like I just, I just knew I had to chill out, not do anything else, and just make sure I don't turn blue or green or something, or <laughs> or pass out in my own vomit. But that that took place over that time period, and most of the crazier stuff actually probably did happen at other people's houses. I think I've told you a story about my friend Brian and Gary when they had a house in Lakeville, and the last time I ever did acid, I remember just it being a, not a good time. <laughs> it was just a bad time. Um, God showed me the secrets of the universe, and I couldn't handle it. <laughs> that was that night. Um, I think I want to try to look into a journalism degree. I don't know how long it takes, um, and I know somebody who uh, teaches journalism over at Randolph College, um, I believe it's journalism, or it's lit or something, uh, Matt, who plays bass in our band, like, he's like, he's lived the lifestyle, <laughs> and I think he, he came out, he's a good person, he's a good guy, I really like him a lot, um, But it's nice to come out on the other end and be a better person. So, yeah, the chill room. I'd really like to see the inside of my old house again. Isn't that a funny thing? Like, I managed to be able to see the inside of the house I lived in in Menden once because I think I went there with my friend Bob and Jen. My friend Bob played in a band that practiced in, like, Medford or Milford. And so we pulled up to the house, and no, I didn't get inside. Nobody was home. That was the problem. I rang the doorbell. I went around back. I checked the doors. <laughs> I think I checked the bulkhead. And I just looked in all the windows, and it was so weird because it was very different than I remembered it, but it was still the layout was there. Um, we had a weird pit in the backyard. It was cement around it was weird i can't explain it um like if you were to open a bulkhead and it was all cement in an l shape well after that it dropped off about eight or ten feet but someone had just thrown junk in there and i remember going in there that was one of the first few things when we were there my dad wanted to clean it out and uh i remember I saw a snake. It was the first time I'd ever seen a snake as a kid, so I had to have been five or six years old. And I was convinced that it had uh, bitten me because there were two small, I think it, it must have been like thorns or something that got me, but there was no other, like it wasn't a bite. It was like it just looked like two pinpricks of blood. And, uh,. I don't remember what happened after that. I don't remember if they made a big deal out of it or they just ignored it. I almost want to say, like, it was just like, no, it's not a snake bite, blah, blah, blah. It's not a poisonous snake bite, blah, blah, blah. Why do we suppress memories? Is it generally because it's something bad? Because, like, I can't remember a lot, like, a real lot of my life. Like, it's just completely null and void like i know the people in that time frame uh like my uncle steve or my uncle larry or my aunt diane or 
we used to hang out with a lot of third cousins for a long time. Our family was... This is weird. Yeah, this is something to talk about. But our family was relatively bigger and tighter. But because of the weird marriages and stuff like that, like my mother married my father, who had been married tw once before. I don't know what happened. I don't know if she died or they divorced or... I have no idea. That sucks. It sucks not knowing that. But that's... <coughs> I might be able to learn that. However... I don't think I can get back the years of memory gaps that are out there. I don't know if I've honestly suppressed something that was terrible to happen to me so bad that no matter how hard I try, I can't get those times back. Like, I know we don't remember every moment of every day, of every minute, you know, or whatever. Like, but, like, Carol will tell stories, or people will tell stories about, like, oh, I was two years old, and I was out back, and sometimes it might be because their parents told them, and they're just retelling it, but, like, Danny Gibbons, who I work for, he'll tell stories about when he was really little, like, two, three, four years old, and I'm like, how do you remember that? Like, do people generally remember that, or is it something that I just have just buried? I don't know. As I get older, though, it bothers me more and more. Mortality is a terrifying thing. It really is. Like, I know I've talked about this before, but, like, I'm sorry when I say that, because I'm just going to say it. Like, I've said it before, I've said it before. We're going to talk about topics. I, <laughs> I had a dream. Here we go. We're just going to steer it completely off course. Um, last night, Corey and I were in New York. It was 2004. It was Game 7 of the ALCS which actually took place at Fenway Park but my dream it was in New York and we were just psyched out of out of our fucking minds to be there um, but I can't remember why we were just walking around like this is a future New York in this um, dream I had too because uh, they were like bridges from building to building like all enclosed like on like um, down near Times Square and we were going across the down these elevators and we were talking about I think trying to score weed <laughs> and how we were gonna do it because we didn't know a lot of people in New York um, and that was our dream we were constantly moving forward and I was always trying to keep up with him he was always a faster walker than I um, I remember that because we used to hang out at all kinds of malls together or just walk places before we had cars. He's a good man. He is a good man. He's not dead. <laughs> Thank God. Or Allah. Or Buddha. Or Jimmy Cricket. Jimmy Crack Corn and I don't care. You should watch Beauty is Embarrassing. It's a documentary about the gentleman. Well, he's done all kinds of art. Um, I can't recommend this enough and it just it's his life story kind of just or at least where he's been the last like 10 or 15 20 years and it tells a little bit about his past but he did some of the set design and character design and voices for um, some of the creatures on Pee Wee's Playhouse um, and he's just done some cool stuff and he's just a neat guy with a neat family and he reminds me of Kenny from Kenny vs. Spenny, if you've ever watched that show. If you haven't watched that show, I think the first season was pretty good. I just don't know how real it was after a while. Like, I kind of feel like a lot of shows that are reality, just like, they start out with good intentions, but then, like, the fans want... You know the, you know how, well, when you watch a scripted show, like a, a fictional show, um, you can usually predict basic character ideas like concepts like um and store what, what the fuck am i talking about <laughs> jesus 24 minutes we might break a record tonight i better stop this before i spiral into a black pit of despair from whence we shall never return again We'll do, yeah, we'll break. I'll take a little break here. We'll come back. We'll do a little 
What's on the menu tonight? A little review of the Lay's Pico de Gallo flavored chips by one of their own employees. Um, and thanks for always coming back. Uh, you guys have a great night. If you're loving watching these, or if you think you know somebody who might enjoy them, please pass it along. Um, you know, follow me on the Twitter if you want. G E Y C E N. Instagram, same. Um, having a great time. We're almost halfway through, my friends. It's interesting. We've got some new viewers, and hopefully, we'll continue to grow. So, don't forget to make someone smile tomorrow. Do your best. Um, try not to forget. I do it. I forget all the time. I'm a terrible person. I'm getting there, though. Don't forget to make yourself a better person tomorrow than you were today tomorrow. See how I combine those two? Um, and let's make the world spin happier together, hand in hand, singing and dancing in the rain, and traveling the road to wherever you go. So, welcome to wherever you are, friends. <sighs> yeah, bon Jovi. Have a great night. I'll see you a little further on down the road to 40. Thanks, guys.